When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Hello, everybody. Welcome once more to another Monday night mini medicine card reading. I am Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman, and we're going to pull some medicine cards. So if you're new here and you, hey, Emerald, if you're new here and don't know how this works, excuse me, the first six people to say yes in the comments get a one, pay, one card reading. So come on in and Hey, Anna, come in and comment yes if you want a reading and until we have six people. And then even after we have six people, you're not out of luck because, <laughs> um, and this goes for anyone who's watching this and repeat, you can all just, when, once we have our six cards, six people, you can just choose a number and then listen to the message from that particular card. And I promise that the universe will find a way to weave and dovetail whatever your message is and the message of whoever that card is actually for. So. And of course, this video is free. My only ask is if you would please share the video and share it on your own page or your own wall, or you can uh, <clears throat> tag people in the comments or whatever. But help me, help me get the word out. Help me to share the love. So. I wonder if it's because it's like summer is starting, but we've been, it's like, there's not as many people on lately. So that's kind of interesting. Only got two people so far. Although last week, a number of people showed up at toward the end, which was fine. And we still got our six, six cards, so. Just gonna go with the flow. All right. And if you would like to support your friendly neighborhood shaman, um, especially if you get something, something tonight and you wish to reciprocate or anything like that, I do have my Venmo and PayPal um, links pinned to the top of the comments. And I greatly, greatly accept anything you wish to give me. Yes, this, this is my day job. I have the best day job in the world. I love my job. But if you would like to support me so that I can, it's, it's such a, it's such a cool, even like traditionally the, the community, the tribe, the village, whatever would support the shaman so that they could focus on doing the spiritual work to support the community. So that is kind of the, the intent that I have. So anyway, so let's go and head and start. Again, if, there, if anyone has come in later and you would like a one card reading, all you need to do is comment yes. And we'll see what the spirits have to say. 
All right, so card number one is for Amaral. <coughs> okay, let's end up. Keep shuffling. Hmm. All right. So Amaral, you got raccoon. Card number one is raccoon. Um, raccoon, I, I always call raccoon kind of the Robin Hood of the animal kingdom. <coughs> uh, because number one, there's the mask, right? It's kind of like the, the, uh, lovable thief kind of thing. Um, and there's the whole, you've never gotten raccoon before, Emerald? Awesome. Um, just like Robin Hood, you know, they, they will take or, you know, they'll steal or they'll take whatever they need. But when they, when they like scrounge for food or whatever, they bring it back to the family first. Um, and so they, they don't eat it where they find it for the most part. And they bring it back and make sure that the young and the elderly get fed first. <laughs> so it's kind of like stealing from the rich, give to the poor. And so raccoon has this definite um, <coughs> service connotation, right? Um, the thing is, the other part that, that I always kind of link to Robin Hood in my head is that, um, <laughs> you know, Robin Hood is this noble thief, right? And he's stealing from the rich to give to the poor, etc. But it's, he finds joy in it, right? He's like, stand and deliver. He's always happy to, to relieve the, the, um, the monks or the sheriff or the, you know, the upper ups of their gold so that other people can feed, get fed, but he, he takes it all in stride and, and he loves what he does. He loves his job, right? Cause he's just like raccoon. He's rascally. He's cunning. He, he, um, he sees, he sees around the apparent structures of society, which is why he can be so successful in, um, in thwarting the, the powers that be, right? Um, And so, in other words, like in, in today's um, context, um, Raccoon's the one that, kind of like the one that comes along that like knows the laws or knows the rules. Not only do they know the rules, they know how to get around the rules. Their, their service, and I, I've, you know, even people like civil servants, sometimes it's like they can feel like their their hands are tied because there, there's someone in front of them that they want to help, but because of the rules, they can't help them, right? And so it's kind of like, like for instance, when when way back another lifetime ago when I was married, uh, my ex went through a year of um, she had cancer and we of course couldn't afford any of the care or the treatments or anything. So we went to DSHS, the Department of Health Services to see what, you know, if they could help us with anything. And, you know, we weren't married at the time, but we were, we'd been together for, I don't know how many years at that point. 
but and so we were still living together and i remember distinctly the woman at dshs was like well you know if you if you lived alone we'd be able to help you more with this and she repeated that a few times and i don't want to you know i mean this was years and years i doubt that she's even still there anymore and i don't want to cast dispersions on anybody but um there's like back way backward ways of helping people without helping people you know um knowing how to get around the red tape it's because like raccoon sees what he wants and no matter what you put in between raccoon and that desire he is going to find his way through whatever is there. He's going to find his way around it. And he's going to do it by instituting techniques and methods that you would not have ever thought of. You know? Um, so it's kind of like, <clears throat> there's this quote that I love from Picasso. And he said something along the lines that, you know, an artist needs to learn the rules of art, etc., so that they then can break the rules, right? Um, and so it's it's like seeing the bigger picture. So knowing knowing what lines absolutely cannot be crossed, but then being able, you know, as long as like. I don't want to put this because everything I'm saying, I'm realizing it, it sounds almost, it kind of sounds deceitful, but it's not, it's like, it's, it's like, okay, somebody's hungry and there's food over here. How do we bring this food over here to these people that need to eat? And so it's like, if it's breaking the rules or it's creating new rules, you know, legislating or whatever to make things happen, it's like, it's, it's kind of seeing, seeing the things that need to happen, seeing the connections that need to be made like that, the hungry and food, just like, it, like right now in our world, we have more than enough food to feed everybody, right? But... because of the laws and cultural identity and blah, 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 and all the red tape, there are starving people in the world and they are starving needlessly. And so it's, it's like raccoon medicine is trying to find the ways to get this food to the starving people. Because it's not a crisis of resource, it's a crisis of thought. It's the way we think and we conceptualize and we categorize our world and people rather than, you know, seeing someone, oh, that person's hungry, let me get them a meal, right? Doesn't matter who they are, what they believe, where they're from, this person is hungry, we need to feed them, right? So it's like cutting through all the crap, getting to the basics, and doing whatever, you know, acrobatics need to be done to get, like, you know, like through the, like, you know, the, 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 the laser, you know, alarm things in the museum or whatever, knowing how you have to do the acrobatics to get up and around or under those lasers without, without touching them off to get what is needed, right? And so it's, it is how it's, it might seem to be, um, how do I want to put this? Um, It might appear like rebellious or, um, you know, sticking it to the man or um, that kind of thing. Like it's just like being obstinate just for the sake of being obstinate or I don't like any rules, so I'm not going to play by them, you know, where it's kind of a, from a negative place. But raccoon medicine is seeing things from a higher place beyond 
rules and etiquette and and red tape does that make sense so it's not that it's it's like a lot of, it's like, so there's a difference between being a rebel and being a leader. Rebels rebel against something, right? And rebels need something to push against. That's why when, like in a lot of different countries, when there's a coup or a, a revolution or something, that the ones taking power, though they had these ideals and were against the the formerly ruling people they tend to end up doing the same thing as the ones they just conquered because they don't have the vision of what what to replace it with does that make sense and so rebels tend to just like once once the the revolution is won then it's like okay now what do we do right because the whole rebellion is based on fighting something else. But leaders see where we're headed. Leaders are more visionary. They see what happens afterwards. Their, their eyes are on the prize, and then whatever route we need to go to get there is, is what is necessary, that, that, that they're willing to do. And so they might appear rebellious. They might appear to be against certain people, but it's actually these people who are in the way of the leaders trying to get to the place where everybody is taken care of. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> and one of the things, <coughs> one of the strengths of Raccoon, the reason they can do that actually is the mask, right? The mask is a metaphor for, um, <clears throat> you know, it. When we're growing up, right, and, and it's like, okay, we're going to grandma's house. Okay, so you have to put on the grandma mask. You have to put on, like, you go to grandma's house, there's certain things you have to say or do, not say and not do. And so it's like putting this mask on, which eclipses who you are. And at the way we're raised is that we have these different masks that we put on in different situations but we're taught that those masks masks are who we are. They are our identity, right? But Raccoon realizes that it's a mask. Like the, I love the um, the movie, the um, Man in the Iron Mask with Leonardo DiCaprio and um, Jeremy Irons and Gabriel Byrne and Gerard Depardieu and um, <clears throat> there's a part in there where the man in the iron mask, they rescued him and then they got caught and they, the king put him back into the mask and the musket, the three musket, it's a three musketeer movie if you didn't know that. Um, <clears throat> and so the three musketeers were like, I am so sorry, this must be, be devastating to you. And the guy was like, no. He's like, it used to be that the mask wore me, but now I wear the mask because he knew who he was underneath. Um, and so when you know who you are underneath, you can wear any mask. You can still say masks. It's just a difference on whether the, the um, importance is coming from the outside or the inside. They can either be <clears throat> be something to hide behind to 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 create barriers and walls between you and someone else and so you're hiding yourself because it's not acceptable or you realize who you are and you want to speak to this certain group of people so you put on the mask of these people so that you can you speak in their language you we I, I heard it called jumping metaphors, right? If you're talking to certain people, you use certain me metaphors and certain language. If you're speaking to someone else, you use other, you use their own um, symbology and mythology and stuff, right? And I learned that in a, in a death doula class 
And the woman, the teacher used that as a way of like when you're when you're dealing with people in hospice, in a hospice situation, right? And you want to do like ceremony with them, you know, and so, you know, if they're Catholic, like I was raised Catholic, they're Catholic, you might say, okay, we're going to call in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or, you know, the Archangel, Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, blah, blah, blah. And if they are pagan, you call in earth, air, fire, and water, right? Because you know that underneath all of the, all of the, um, the facade, the fabric, right? The, the, the trappings, that's the word I'm looking for. Beneath the trappings of everything, it's all the same thing underneath. And so the mask, rather than becoming a barrier or wall that, that hides you and separates you from others, the mask becomes the interface with, with which you use to communicate to others. So, It does resonate. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad, Amaral, because I feel like I I was just kind of, you know, like saying the same things over and over and over and just kind of rambling. But it's it's like when you know the rules, then you know what you can do to get around the rules. You know, you know, and it it's really like like. Spirit of the law versus letter of the law, right? Um, like I saw recently a picture, there was a photograph of a person in Florida who was swimming in Florida and a manatee came up and grabbed their leg and just held on. They were like, and and this person's like sitting there treading water with his manatee attached to the leg and it's illegal to pet manatees. And so I was like, I, and I, I like my first, my, the first words out of my mouth was, if that ever happened to me, I'm going to jail because there is nothing, if a manatee is holding onto me, there is no way I am going to not pet that manatee, right? And so it's kind of like, whatever. I don't know if that's really a good, a good example. That kind of maybe is a little bit different, but, um, it, you you kind of get what I mean. It's like there's certain. It's like, psh, okay, what if if that's a thing? I'm gonna go to jail because there's no way I am not gonna pet this vanity that is hugging my leg, right? So anyway, so give yourself credit for. It's like like this is a, a sign of having done this work for so long that you know it inside and out, right? Um, it's just, it's second nature. And so, and I was just talking, I did, um, the other day I did, a, a friend of mine has a sweat lodge and we, we did a sweat lodge together and we were both joking because you know, it was so cool because she's been a lodge pourer for somewhere 15, 20 years or something like that, you know, and I've been a shaman for that long at least. And so we're both kind of leaders, right? And we both have our students and groups and we were just, we were laughing at how, not disrespectfully, get, I want that to be said first, but how we didn't have to follow the rules strictly. And it's like, when you're teaching new people, you want to instill those rules and etiquettes because that's the structure they need to base on what they do with it later. But because we had both been around the block a number of times and knew knew what was necessary, you know, just like like in, in shamanism, we always say that intention is everything. Intention is more important than the rules. And it's like, if you don't know the correct words to say in a ceremony, you speak from your heart and those are more powerful than just reciting some chant or something, right? <laughs> Perfect, Emerald. Exactly. It's like, okay, well, if you want me to wear, the, it's like, you can put a mask on me 
and I will I will speak about the parts that are pertinent to you, but I will not deny that that mask is only a fraction of who I am. And I am fully aware of all of that power and presence that doesn't get through the mask. It's kind of like the mask is a filter. And like, So it's like being aware of that. And yeah, yeah, you don't need to wear a mask. Um, so, so there you go. I hope some of that hit. I hope that made sense to you. <laughs> but like I said, it is, it, it, it's, it's a real kind of a benchmark of someone who's been doing the work for so long and so intensely that you don't have to go back. Okay, what was step one? Okay, and then step two, and then, okay, step three is this, and then we have to do, it's like, you, it, it, because it, it's like discipline, how discipline, like, I, and I'm thinking about the, the martial arts and like Bruce Lee, and um, actually I read um, a book by David Carradine, and he was talking about the the irony of you need you know when you're practicing the martial arts you need discipline because you need to do it repetitively you know <clears throat> you have to focus on on like the positions and different you know the different things so that it becomes second nature, so that when you enter a situation where it is necessary, you're not in your head, your body already knows the movements and the all the stuff, so that you can, it, it, the discipline ironically frees you up. And when it's time to use it, you just, you just go into the flow, because your body, your physical body knows it so well. And it's the same kind of thing. It's like after going, you know, following the rules for so long and blah, 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 you start to realize what is necessary and what isn't. So, so again, good on you. You are doing so well, Emerald. And I don't mean to be like, I, I realize it's like almost every, every week you get these cards and it's just like this thumbs up from the universe and I don't mean to just be like a yes man like oh, usually you know I don't want to be just that person but I it's I am just being honest and present with what is coming up for you so you know I'm not stacking the deck so to say anyway so yeah, all right, Anna, we've only got two people tonight so far, so maybe it'll be kind of a short night. I wouldn't mind because I'm kind of tired. I still haven't, we were in the sweat lodge. We started <laughs> putting the sweat lodge together at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> And then we didn't finish till around 2 or 2.30 a.m. <laughs> so, um, there was haul hauling wood and, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I think that's yours, Anna. So I'm just, I'm just, all I'm saying is I'm a wee bit tuckered out. I still haven't totally recovered. It was such a great, a great experience, but um, I'm kind of tuckered, so I won't mind if we have to call it early tonight. So Anna, this literally jumped out of the deck and Beaver is, <laughs> it's so funny because I was just talking about visionaries, right? Leaders being visionaries and saying beyond what is apparent. And that's exactly what beaver medicine is. <coughs> um, where other animals look and see just trees and bushes, beaver looks and he sees dams and lodges and such. 
he sees the resources and he sees what can be done with them. Um, and so it it's, like I've said this before, <coughs> sometimes I get afraid that I'm, I repeat myself too much and people are going to get tired of hearing me say the same things over and over, but <coughs> when you have desires or passions for something and you're you've got this vision of something and and I'm not talking strictly like visual a vision might be a feeling you know or just a, a, a knowingness or something but you're given you know that there is something beyond what is present right now, right? That is a gift from creator as a compass to tell you which direction to go. And, and um, Beaver is, is the visionary. He gets that vision and he trusts that creator is not going to give him a vision for something unless it is also providing the resources with which to see that vision through. And, if you, and, and in a way, it's like beaver's teeth never stop growing. And it's kind of like, it's like a, a further kind of um, proof of trust, right? I'm never going to run out of, of wood. I'm never going to run out of trees. So my teeth never need, don't ever need to stop growing because I'm always going to be chomping down trees. And so it's kind of like, like leaving the tap open because you know it's always going, you know, it's always going to hit pay dirt. Um, and so, <laughs> um, beavers, benefit so many different beings. The dams, when they build their dams, it's like they create, um, they create water features that support wildlife. Um, it gives another water source for other animals to drink. It increases the plant the vibrancy of the plant kingdom. Um, it also creates more bogs and such to help soak up the rain so that there aren't floods. Um, so it makes the land more resilient. It also helps to prevent forest fires. If there are fires, it gives the creatures of the forest a place of safety to come to. Um, it provides more um, spawning places for other animals who need the water in order to be born, like frogs that have to be tadpoles first or dragonflies, etc., that are born in the water and then, you know, eventually leave the water. But it, it creates, you know, the, the river is flowing and to to have to have a, a, um, a constructive place for that cycle of life to take part, you need to have still water. And so it creates those ponds behind the, the lodge or however that works. <laughs> and all of a sudden I was like, I, I'm not an engineer. So I'm like, second guessing myself but anyway so they create ponds and marshes and all these things that are hugely beneficial for the woodland right the thing is they're not doing it for the other creatures they're doing it because they have a vision and they're following their heart it is their joy to build and so they're they're just you know going to work, day, going, doing their thing. They love chopping down trees and building things, making dams and making lodges and 
it's like it's their it's their life work it's their their bliss like joseph campbell will talk about but by doing by following their own heart it ripples outward and it affects and benefits everyone around them <coughs> so in other words when you have a vision of where you want to go or what you want to do what you want your life to look like <coughs> number one you can trust that you couldn't see it if on some plane in some future some reality it didn't already exist like if you can visualize it you can create it uh, number two that you wouldn't have a vision like that if you didn't have the resources with which to create it. <laughs> and then number three, to remember that it's by following our own hearts, seeing to our own growth and enlightenment that we actually bring our best gift to the world, that our presence is literally the best present you have for the world. And so, it's kind of like, like, like that, that vision, that desire, you know, and, and a lot of people get caught up in the negative part of it, like, <coughs> um, I'm always so poor. I'm so poor. I'm never, I would love to do this with my life, but there's no way I can get there because I'm just too poor or I, I'm not worthy or blah, blah, blah. And so they, they block it off themselves and never go for it. Um, and so it's like, even when the obstacles show up, even when even when you're, when someone challenges you or challenges your vision, you know, I mean, I grew up with people calling me a dreamer and calling me this and that because it's like, you got to get your head in the real world, right? And I'm so glad I never did. I'm so glad I never did. Um, because I wouldn't be able to do this work. If I, if I had given over to, well, it's inevitable. I guess I got to grow up and get a job and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so because people, because it does take work, but more than like physical work or effort, what it takes is dedication. What it takes is believing in yourself, trusting, again, that you live in a friendly universe, not a hostile one, that the, that the universe has your back, and that the universe wants you to succeed. The universe wants you to be at your happiest and greatest fulfillment. Because a world of happy, fulfilled people is a peaceful, creative one. It's a vibrant one. And so by being your best and greatest self is the best way to contribute to that vision of a world unified, no matter what, you know, and it's not about wiping out different cultures or different traditions or different identities is about recognizing the, the, the patchwork quilt that each of those has to play together, right? And it's, it's about, in Star Trek, they talk about IDIC, infinite diversity and in infinite combinations. <laughs> and I can't think of a better description of creator, right? That's what this universe is. It's an infinite, it's infinite diversity and infinite combinations. So we have this infinite diversity of people, of things, and we have these, these inspirations to put things together, right? And like they say, there's nothing new under the sun. And the only new things are things that are combinations of old things that no one has ever put together again ever put together before. Um, 
And so believe in that, that infinitely creative universe where all things are possible. In fact, in the quantum view of the multiverse, everything that can possibly happen does, right? So whatever your vision is, that is your future you kind of reaching back through time, taking your hand and pulling you forward. You just have to believe in that. Use that desire, that passion um, as your North Star, right? And then instead of being, oh, I can't get there. Oh, crap, I just blew it. I just did this one thing and now I feel like it's it's out of reach. I think I've mentioned that before. I don't remember who I, I think it was Abraham Hicks I heard talking about when you feel like you're off the path, you're actually just hitting the rumble strips on the side of the road. And those rumble strips, those feelings of of disconnection, of disillusionment, etc. Their job is to help point you back toward the main course. It's like, oh crap, I'm starting to feel bad. I need to, I need to refocus and get my bearings again. Because as long as I'm focusing on that North Star and I'm moving toward the North Star, what, no matter how that looks, I mean, it might be a curvy wending road to get there, but it's like, that's your destination. And, um, and again, it's like sometimes, you know, it's like when you tune in a radio station, right? You kind of, I feel like this is something else I've been talking, saying a lot lately, but you like, you tune it, uh, you tune it in, and you kind of hit the station, and then you always kind of go past it a little bit. And then you come back, maybe past it a little bit on the other side again before really focusing in on it. And so it's about that journey. You've got the North Star right there. You've got the radio station. But in order to know the the truest path to it, you're going to have to kind of hit the rumble strips on either side of the road to really help you focus, to help you really get into the groove of it. And then if it happens again, you get discouraged or disillusioned again. It's like, oh, that's right. There's my North Star. It's like, okay, let's, let's, let's start tuning in that radio station, you know, and that, that radio station is your heart. Your heart will tell you when you're in alignment or not, right? So trust your heart. Your heart truly is your authority because your heart your heart is big enough and vast enough that it can take into account all other living beings. And if it's not, if it's not for the highest good of everyone else, it's not for your highest good either. <clears throat> and if it is for your highest good, it's automatically for the highest good of all beings. There is no separation. <clears throat> so focus on, you know, when, like when you meditate, like if you're having barriers or old issues coming up or obstacles coming up, um, allow yourself to feel them, to notice them, and realize that those are the trees you're cutting down to build your dam. Those are the resources. By cutting through those, you're increasing your own foundation, right? And I haven't, haven't even gotten into talking about the lodge, which is the greatest accomplishment of the beaver. Um, you know, the lodge is the solid, impenetrable structure. Its foundation is in the earth beneath the water and it rises above the water. So in the middle of this topsy-turvy world with, with currents and waves and unpredictability and uncertainty, there's this solid structure, unmovable, impenetrable, um, it's even, it's even, it's hard for even bears to tear into a beaver lodge. 
Um, and what that lodge is, is a place of, of shelter. It's a place of safety, of warmth, of love, of stability. In an otherwise cold and wavy, unpredictable world, it's like stability and love and connection. Um, and it's like, that is your vision, right? To become that shelter for yourself, to be, have that alignment, right? With the foundation in the earth and rising above the waters of our everyday world. If you think of the waters as the emotional realm and the drama, it's like psh, you're immovable. When you reach that place, the waves can come and go, the currents can run around and try to beat you up, but they can't get in and they can't move you. And so you become that shelter for yourself. And then, just like I said earlier about Beaver, by doing that, becoming your own presence, having count, you know, your own counsel, your own shelter, you automatically begin to f help others to find that in themselves. At first, they might be drawn to you as that safety. But when they spend enough time with you, your energy, your frequency at that safety and fulfillment actually starts to raise their frequency to the place where they become their own shelter. So, I don't know if any of that is pertinent. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, but there is nothing, when Beaver comes along, <coughs> there is nothing you can't do. If you can visualize it, you can create it. Okay? You are so powerful and you are so magical and you do know how to move mountains, right? Beaver is one of the only animals besides humans that shape their environment, adapt their environment to suit them rather than the other way around. And so you're one of the, the, the shakers and movers of the world. You're one of the ones kind of a similar to what I was talking about with Amaral with raccoon, it's like you see the bigger picture and you can see what can be done with things. And so you know how to move things and change things and shift things in ways that are productive to help, right? And so, and, and that all has to start with yourself to know that, and this is a big one, you are worthy of that change you are worthy of the confidence, the self-love, the self-esteem, the freedom that comes from following your heart. That comes from prioritizing your vision of what can be rather than just Following, following the rules, following the the gr the crowd, etc. Right. So you are meant to change the world, but do it for yourself. Do it from your own passions. It's it's basically what Gandhi was talking about when he said, "Be the change you want to see in the world." It's up to each of us to become what we want to see in the world because that's the only way we change the world is by changing ourselves and the more of us that do that that's when real change happens in the world right so so good job my friend i i have so much faith in you i have seen you come through things and i know it, it, it is so um appropriate for you like you can do anything and the water just rolls off your back <laughs> all right and community is so important to you beavers are so communal so there you go
So I hope that makes sense. And I guess I'm actually bringing it in under an hour this week. And <laughs> it's so funny because when I was doing the event page for tonight's readings, um, I actually, I usually have it set for an hour and I actually changed it to an hour and a half because I usually end up going till 930. And so I just changed that tonight and it's the first night I think I've ever come in under an hour. So, but it was a powerful, um, it, I have thought about doing less cards in an evening because like that, it's like I was able to go more into depth about the individual cards and stuff. So anyway, so there you have it. I'm going to pull one more card for the community. For anyone who's watching this, whether you got a card or not. And I'm just going to remind you again that I do have my PayPal and Venmo information pinned to the top of the, the comments. Um, if you feel like you got something out of tonight and want to reciprocate or you, you just want to support your friendly neighborhood shaman, I, I have the deepest gratitude to anything. And, and for those who do continue to donate week on a weekly basis for these videos, I am, I am, I am so very grateful to you because it really does make a difference. So thank you. Um, also, when we're done here, I am going to share this video to my Facebook page where you can watch it again. And if you're watching this, if you didn't see the live part, you can watch it and repeat and just choose. Well, tonight there were only two cards, so choose a number. Choose either one or two, and then you can see what the cards are. Or you can, you know, especially with, since it's just been a couple, you can choose both. Because there were definite connections between the two. Um, what else? Oh, and tomorrow night, Tuesday, the tomorrow's the 4th? <coughs> From 6 to 8 tomorrow evening, <clears throat> I'm going to do another one of what I call my shamanathons. And <clears throat> you can tune in, you can, you can send me a question or just a request for a reading beforehand, or you can um, watch live. There's usually enough time to do it, like for people to get on during the, the live. But it's anyone who, it's open donations. So no matter how much you donate, um, what I'm doing is three card readings rather than just the one card reading like tonight. And, or uh, like a five minute shamanic Reiki healing. Or if you have a question, it's like readings or healings or teachings. Oh my. Um and so if you have a question about shamanism or spirituality or anything that you would like answered, you can also ask a question like that and I will just answer that for you like a teaching. So I've got all three of those available. Usually it's just been the readings, which is fine. But what you can donate anything, you can donate a dollar, you can donate $200, whatever you want and get get a three card reading or a five minute healing or an answer, uh, an answer, right. So again, that's tomorrow night. The information is on my web, on my Facebook page. And I hope to see you tomorrow night. And cause it's like, I am a small business owner. This is my day job. And I'm actually just a wee bit short this month for rent. And so I'm, I'm helping, I'm hoping to help you as you help me. It's, you know, doing things mutually. Like I have things that I can, I can share with you for the benefit of having a roof over my head and such, right? So anyway, it's like, that's how we support each other. That's how the communities work. Um, oh, and I didn't say, uh, when, um, 
Not only will I share this to my Facebook page, I will also upload it to my Perching Move Studios YouTube channel where you can watch over four years worth of these videos. If you ever need a little bit of guidance, you can choose one of the Monday mini medicine card reading videos and just, again, choose a number and see what that guidance is. And I promise Spirit has just the most miraculous way of, of giving us the exact correct information at the exact correct time. So, and there's other videos on there of ceremonies and songs and stories. And I'm hoping this summer to be able to add more to that. I'm, I'm really hoping to do some more videos and fun things. Um, and if you're curious about who I am and what I have to offer, um, you can learn more about me, Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman, on my website, which is per perchingwolfstudios.net. And you can see the different services I offer, uh, readings and healings and teachings. Oh my! And you can learn more about me. You can sign up for a session with me. You know, even if, if I don't specifically have something listed, um, if you just want a shamanic perspective on something you're going through or whatever it is, um, you know, and part of the, part of the teaching thing is I, I do, I take on, um, one-on-one -on -one mentoring students. I also have some classes coming up, but I, um, I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So if you've ever wanted to explore a shamanic path and weren't sure where to go, I can help you with that. I, it is my, I, I love my job. I love being able to help people find their paths. Okay, is that it for now? I believe so, because I'm just about, I'm approaching the one hour mark. And okay, so this is the card, our last card, the card for the community for this week, for everybody. We've got armadillo. So <coughs> keep Keep your boundaries, hold your boundaries, make sure you're you're taking care of yourself, right? Because it's those boundaries. And again, this is kind of like what I was talking about the masks with raccoon. Boundaries are flexible. They move just like armadillo's armor is just hair. It's a high density hair. And so it's flexible. It breathes, it moves. And your boundaries should be that as well. Some days your, your boundaries are right up close. Sometimes it's like, you know, you need to stay 10 feet away from me at all times. But hold your, your boundaries because it's your boundaries that allow you to thrive inside. The soft on your belly is protected by those boundaries. And what those boundaries also do, they afford armadillo a certain amount of courage because he knows that he can curl up in a ball and be safe at any time so he can venture further into the unknown into discomfort because he knows that he's still safe right so hold those boundaries like I, there's a meme and it, it says something like compassion without boundaries is destruction it's like you can't you can't do this kind of work if you're watching this you can't walk your path without having boundaries because it's self-destruction if you don't so there you go all righty so thank you again for joining me i hope you join me again next week Please, again, please share this video. Um, come back next week. Bring your friends. And I hope to see you again. And until I do, know that I love you, that I see you, and that I honor you. So have a wonderful week, everyone. And go shining. All right.